Hello, good morning. It's coming up to 7am on Saturday, the 12th of December, and I'm just starting off on a 200km DIY Aldax from Bath. A quick update. I finished my last video saying I was going to head down to Southampton Travel Lodge on a 200km DIY. I've had to amend that. I've, I've actually rebooked the hotel stay. A couple of family commitments come up and I just can't make two days away from home this month. Today is the first 200 I've done since early November. I tried not to stray out of the area during the second lockdown. So I'm actually quite nervous about doing the distance today. I went out for a, an 80 mile ride last Sunday <clears throat> just to see how I was going and a, a little bit of preparation. And I have to say by 80 miles I was struggling. So I think I may well struggle today. I'm a great believer in long distance cycling being the first 50% is physical, the second 100% is mental, so I'm going to have to use some of the mental toolkit today. So I'll give you a couple of examples. I've said before, I always calculate my time allowance. First of all, I never refer to a time limit. It's always a time allowance because I just slightly reframe the time and I convert what would be a liability working against me into an asset that I have some sort of amount of control over so you can just sort of see by slightly altering the context very very slightly you can give yourself a massive advantage. The other big strategy I use is calculating the time allowance because I know on this ride in particular I've got 13 hours and 59 minutes so all around the ride I can glance at my Garmin and it'll give me an estimated time to finish. The further into the ride you get, it, it becomes more accurate. But I know by starting at 6.30 this morning, I've got till just before 8.30 tonight. So you can see I can lay one on top of the other. You can probably tell I'm talking really fast. I can't afford to hang about today because I'm quite unfit. And I'm going to be struggling to get round within the time allowance, to be honest. So updates are going to be minimal, just at the designated stops for recharging batteries and food. I'll see you on the road. Just before we head off for Midford Station, there's a lovely late crescent moon. And there's a planet just down to the southwest of it. It's probably Venus because it's, it's high just above the sunrise. Heading on that main road there. And then... At the top of Midford Hill, I'll be getting on some minor roads heading down through the Wiley Valley. It's now 10 to 9, 8.50 a.m. I'm in the Wiley Valley heading down towards Salisbury. A little bit about today's route. I'm heading south east down the Wiley Valley to Salisbury, doing a big turn there and then heading north up towards Upavon along the Avon Valley. And then I'll start veering off what would it be northwestish. Then I'll cross the M4 corridor near Chippenham, do a very sharp V and then start coming back down to Marshfield and then back to Bath along the A420, A Chippenham to Bristol Road and then I'll get on the Bath to Bristol bicycle track. One of my time management strategies I mentioned earlier on was calculating the time allowance and overlaying that on the Garmin readout. So I'll give you an example now. My Garmin is estimating I've got 8 hours and 20 minutes to go until the finish. Clearly that's not taking into account any stops or headwinds this afternoon. I'm doing quite well for time at the moment with the tailwind incidentally. I know it's 10 to 9 so if you overlay that onto the time allowance that's suggesting I'll finish around about 10 past 5 this evening, which gives me over three hours in hand. Now, being realistic, I don't think that's going to be the case. But as you can sort of see early in the ride, you'll get this false reading, but it also gives you a dose of confidence later in the ride. If I am struggling this afternoon, as it gets hilly, a bit headwindy and building my fatigue and lack of fitness, I can use that same technique really to gauge it much, much more accurately. Another one out of the mental toolkit is, again, it's reframing the distance. I found my Garmin, when I set a route in, it will count down, not just the time, but the remaining distance. And as I go through certain points, it seems to just trigger this amazing feeling of sort of well-being. Uh, whenever I go below 100 miles, that I've just passed through 99 miles to go. That's the bulk of today's ride, but say, for instance, when you're doing a 600 kilometer ride, 375 miles, when you've got less than 100 to go, it feels like you're almost home. 
even though it's almost the equivalent of most today today's road. And as you go down, as you get more and more tired, the remaining distance or the remaining goal that you've got to achieve becomes smaller. So you can sort of see as the tiredness goes up, the goal goes down. And they seem to sort of counterbalance each other out. And you get this tremendous feeling of well being for the last ten miles as it it, it discounts down 9.9 .9 miles, 9.8, 9.7, 9.6. So I've mentioned it many times, you just get this amazing feeling of well-being. I've passed through Salisbury, I've done my direction change now, I'm heading north up the Avon Valley. This is really nice, the Wiltshire Avon, two swans there. Just passing through this nice wooded section, heading up towards Stonehenge, see the sign for it, although we won't see the monument itself, and then we'll pass through a paven before then another direction change. Time for another little update on the time management. I'm now 78 miles to go, so I've done 21 miles since I spoke to you in the Wiley Valley, and my Garmin is estimating 6 hours 28 minutes, and it's bang on 11 a.m. So that's round about half past five finish time. So again, three and a half, three and a bit hours in hand. I'm losing a little bit of time. That's more to do with the stopping. I'm pretty sure that three hours is going to shrink the closer I get to the finish. But as you can see, it allows you to sort of just manage your time. Because on a DIY, you're not going through controls. Because normally controls act as a bit of a, a window. If you get there bang on the opening time, you're doing all right. If you get there bang on the closing time, you probably need to keep your eye on the, the distance and the time. Ideally, you want to get through there halfway through the time window. You just cannot do that on DIYs. You've got to figure out your own system. Also, it's coming up to midwinter. So it's going to be getting dark quite early, about 4pm, and if I don't finish, say, to about 8, 8.15, that's going to be four and a half hours, four and a quarter hours in the dark. There's a really simple free trick you can give yourself. It's something that's a stair, so it, I just figure, why not use it? And it is quite a powerful little pick-me-up, so I'll talk to you about that later on as it gets dark. I'm about to make a direction change and I'm also approaching the halfway point. It's one of the things I really like about making my routes up via GPS. You just come across these little tracks that other people would have known and probably been very difficult to find on an ordnance survey map. And this is one of them. There's two roads about to converge. I'm going to go from one road that I've been on for a few miles onto another. But to avoid a busy junction, it cuts you through this lovely little stretch of the Avon where there's some weirs. Right behind me you'll see a seat. I've always fancied wild camping there. I may try that sometime. With my time update, the latest ETA is going to be about 10 to 6. So you can see the timetable is gradually slipping away. And I'm used to that. I do admit to being a bit nervous because last week I went out and it's the first really long ride since the end of the second lockdown. And I did flounder a bit around about 80, 90 miles. And so that could well happen today. I'm sort of half expecting it. But I'm sort of prepared for it. As I said, there's little techniques you can use to focus yourself. It's 1.30 p.m. now, and I'm in the Pusey Vale, looking across at Autumn Barnes White Horse, one of the eight Wiltshire White Horses there. I'm going to be heading left shortly. I'm going to go into Subway at Devizes to get a sandwich and a fizzy drink. I'm okay for energy at the moment. I'm just very aware that I may go through a bit of an energy trough later on, especially around dust, so I want to be prepared. As I go into Devizes, you'll see Devizes new horse and is the only one of the eight that appears to be going from left to right. As you can see, all the others, that one in particular, goes from right to left. I've now got 25 miles to go, so I've just completed 100 miles and I actually feel alright. Last week on my ride, 80 miles, about a mile from Bath, <laughs> I really started to feel tired. And I thought to myself, gosh, this time next week I'll have 45 miles to go still. 
but I'm glad I did experience that. It made me take today very seriously with food and drink and just stopping. At the moment, my Garmin's estimating I'll get home at 7pm. Clearly going to be a bit later now because of this stop. I'm just charging my Garmin and having a sandwich and a bit of a drink. But you can see this morning I had nearly three hours in hand. And now I've got about an hour and a half. So you can see I've lost 50% of my breath rate. It quite often happens, especially when I'm on the, the, the heavier straight handed bar, 26 inch wheel bike. But all going well, I should be home 7, 7.30, about half an hour in hand. It's always nice to have about an hour in hand. And the reason I practice this technique all the time, even when I'm quite fit in the summer and I'm doing the 200s and knocking them out quite easy, I just practice the technique all the time. Because if you do struggle on a big ride, you can just switch it instantly. You've practiced it so often. And you'll sometimes see the emergency service or the armed forces be awarded for outstanding acts of bravery and they always say the same thing don't they the journalist says to them or the interviewer says were you scared and they say no the training just clicked in and it took me years to work out why do they always say the same thing probably because the journalist in that situation and me and you for that matter would have been scared the people themselves they've just trained and trained and trained they simulated it in all types of conditions until you can just suddenly just switch it on like that and I think it's the same with this technique I use. When I do need it, I can just switch instantly. I'm pretty convinced that just making habits like this is one of the simplest ways to just flick that switch when you need it. It's not that late, but it's now pitch black out in the countryside. And the thing with riding in December is you are going to be riding long periods in the dark. But I think there's a freebie that you can use. And it's Christmas lights. I mean, look at this. This is just a church tower lighting up. But for the last half an hour or so, I've been going through villages with lots of Christmas lights. And yes, I know some people sneer at them, but the way I look at it is they're there anyway. You might as well use them to lift your spirits. And I generally do. They they warm me up. They they warm my soul up. I just, I just love seeing them. And January is another hard month to ride in as well. And most Christmas lights are still at the bulk of January. And by the time you get to February, the evenings are starting to lighten already. It's a free lunch. Well, it's not free. Somebody's paying for the electricity. As I said, it's there. You might as well use them. And I, I do. I, I really find they give me a massive lift. I'm now about four miles from home on the Bath to Bristol cycle path at Saltford. I've got over an hour to get home four miles, so I should do it. <laughs> it's been really good to get round in one piece. I did think I was going to have problems on this one after my little episode last week but it seems to be fine it just meant i took more care with the food and pacing myself it's really good to get one under my belt um i'm going to try and start the randoner around the year again so i did one in november and i've done today's and i'm probably i would say from experience the hardest month to do them is in january i often find december is a lot easier than january just from personal experience as I said at the start of this video, I cannot go away to Southampton travel. I've got a funeral to go to in a couple of days. I have rebooked it for the middle of the March, so hopefully I'll ride down then and stay overnight and f maybe film that. Between now and Christmas, I'm going to try and get out on my bike and try out some new equipment. It was a bit of feedback I got from my last video. And I got one of my YouTube subscribers to thank for their heads up. Terry, thanks mate. I'm going to come along here and try and try it out maybe the next dry day and make a video about it. So hopefully I'll see you before Christmas. If not, have a very Merry Christmas everybody. I'll see you soon.